filled my soul well praise the lord amen we're going live right now on rumble and facebook so praise god praise god hey good evening and welcome to the services here at the west marion baptist church we are so glad you're with us tonight and have tuned in thank you for all of you that tuned in this morning with you praise the lord amen we're glad you were with us you can download the study notes for tonight uh there i believe they're there for you and facebook as well uh, god bless you thank you tonight we got a wonderful study in the book of the psalms david wrote this psalm in uh, 138 psalm 138 tonight we're going to be looking at this is a psalm that David wrote uh, as an experience in his life of all the troubles that were surrounding him and that he was going through in his life and he wrote this psalm about that trouble what to do what we can do when we're going through that kind of trouble and I think it's going to be a real blessing to you tonight I think you'll enjoy it as we take a look at it this evening in Psalm 138 so everybody be turning to there those of you that are on rumble and so forth with us turn to Psalm 138 tonight as we look at a psalm that David wrote, a time when David's life was on the line. Now, your troubles tonight may not be that severe, okay? But everybody in here tonight has some troubles. They may be light, they may be mild, they may be moderate, they may be strong, or they could be severe as David's was because David's life was in, in, in jeopardy here uh, that was going on. Uh, most scholars believe it was a time when uh, David was surrounded by his enemies, can you imagine that? David, the king of Israel, was surrounded, God's anointed, a man after God's own heart, was surrounded by his enemies. And of all things, you know, Saul's been after him and trying to kill him. Now Absalom, Absalom his son, is on the rampage after him, and the, hunt, and the hunt is on. And so you can imagine what's going through his heart and mind, that not only King Saul's after him, the Philistine armies are after him, and now he's got his own son after him. And so, and he's surrounded by this. So I'd say this is a guy that's in trouble. And, and David had a lot of troubles like that in his life. From time he was just a kid, some of the troubles he faced. Uh, he faced a bear, that's trouble. He faced a lion, that's trouble. He faced a giant that was nine foot six, weighed over 600 pounds, that's trouble. And not only that, he was facing the whole Philistine army that was behind the giant should he had not won the battle. And I mean, so uh, th th this guy was in constant trouble. Uh, facing his life and of course when he became the king of Israel uh, he had troubles and so everything wasn't so hunky-dory just because you're a king Amen. not even just because you're God's man not even just because you're God's anointed doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble and so David was experiencing trouble and then he writes this psalm as a result of it and we're going to take a look at it here in just a moment but let me share with you those that are watching with us and on rumble with us i want to give you a report uh, there that we've looked at and here's what's uh, taken place in the last uh, 30 days uh, that we take a look at here in the last 30 days we've had 705 views on rumble in the last 30 days 450 52 visitors and so we, we just give God the praise for that and here's another one 
uh, and this is from June 6th to July 6th, we had 646 views with 532 visitors. That's just in a 30-day period. And then the ones I just read to you was July 7th through July, uh, August the 6th. So that's about almost 1,400 views in 60 days with right at 1,000 visitors in 60 days on our Rumble uh, program. So Rumble, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in with us and watching with us and being with us. And we ask you to subscribe. That's always a blessing. But here's another one I think you're going to really enjoy. Also, uh, from YouTube, the creators of YouTube, our YouTube channel, for July uh, 2022, all right? Last month for July, we're talking one month, 30 days, we had 635 viewers watching 7,809 minutes. Huh? Is that something worth shouting and praising God for? That's just in one month. One month. So all we can say to that is what, church? To God be the glory for great things he has done. So you see, you wonder if people are watching and listening. Absolutely, they are. And again, to God be the glory, we thank him. I was sharing that with Dr. Woodward this afternoon. And good evening, Doc, uh, to you and Miss Joan there and Debbie. God bless you for tuning in with us tonight. Sorry you can't be here. Uh, we love you. I hope this will be a blessing to you, brother. And uh, thanks for your comments this morning. They mean so much to me. So we praise the Lord for that. Amen. But you see, that's the reason why, folks. Here And here's the thing. This is what gets me, church. Here's a man that loves the Lord, loves the church, like many of you. Here's a man, that, that a brother in Christ, that, that wants to come to church desperately and can't because of his health and the issues he's going through. And it's sad when those that can and won't. Amen. Can, all right. Thank you, sister. Amen. I'll get somebody riled up on that. Isn't that, isn't that. isn't that sad? That is so sad when people can come. There isn't really anything physically, mentally, you know, socially wrong that they can't come and won't. And yet here's a brother that wants to come so badly and can't. So I want to thank you, Dr. Woodward. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for everything. God bless you. Let's get into our writings tonight. Let's read Psalms 138, 1 through 8. Trusting when things go wrong. Anybody had anything go wrong in your life lately? Hey, come on now. Hey, huh? Amen. I'm not the only one here tonight, right? All right, let's praise God because there, there's things do go wrong. And trust me, if they're not right now, wait till tomorrow or next day or a couple of days from now. Trust me, believe me, something will go wrong. Now, when it does, are you going to trust God? You see, you take a look at David's life and what David's going through. How in the world could David write this when his very life was on the line? His son's out to kill him. Saul's out to kill him. The Philistines are out to kill him. And he's surrounded on all sides. And then when it's all said and done, he writes this psalm. And it's going to help us how he did it. And, and, and we ought to learn from it how we're going to do it. So let's read it. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Now David writes this after all of this problem. Okay. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me. How, see, how about you? Can you say that? When you cried, God answered you? What a beautiful here. And strengthenest me, and with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Uh, through, through though the Lord be high, I think he's quoting Isaiah 6, 1 there. Uh, yea, hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Now think about that for a minute. When you want to get cocky and you want to get boastful and bragging and blowing your trumpet, your horn, God is afar off. God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So though I walk in the midst of trouble, Listen to this. Thou wilt revive me. 
Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand uh, against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Father, thank you for tonight. Bless our time in your word now. Lord, bless your word as you always do. Thank you for your anointing and your power this morning. Father, we ask for it again tonight that your power and your anointing will be upon your servant. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. Be gracious for it. Bless your word and may we learn from it. May we be motivated, challenged, excited, and helped tonight. Let the word of God be a strength and an encouragement and a bomb in Gilead. And Father, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In the precious name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, this psalm, of course, of David was when he was surrounded by his enemies. That if you notice how he started off, his thoughts uh, was of the temple, uh, were in his mind, in the midst of his troubles, and he recognized its inspiration. I'm gonna, you're going to enjoy this. This is good, I'm telling you. All right, well, what's the first thing? I, and I want to give you the five G's. Everybody hears about 5G today, right? All your phones are... 5G. So I thought this would be really cool to have a 5G message tonight. So all of you that haven't got your 5G phone, get one, but we're going to give you a 5G message out of the Psalms tonight, okay? 5Gs. Are you ready for the first G? Here it is. Look, you can't help but miss it in these first songs here. Gladness. Gladness. The gladness was ringing through the opening verses is an expression of the psalmist's joy in God. Now, if you don't think so, take a look at this. Now, remember, this is a guy that's been surrounded by his enemies in a lot of trouble and look what he says totally opposite than the way the people think today what's the first thing he does david's inner compulsion was to worship god why is it when people get in trouble they go away from god rather than coming to him have you noticed that today in a time in which we live the more trouble the more aggravation the more circumstances the more situations and people's lives we see him further and further going away from the lord and further and further away from the church. We do. We see it, folks. It's the truth. I mean, his inner compulsion was to worship. That's what we did this morning. I'm so glad the service we had this morning, we had a worship service. We worshiped the King of glory and, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and we, we did our best to lift him up and to exalt him and to magnify him. And I'm play, praying that through that and through everybody watching this thing, through the days ahead, he's going to draw people to himself. Now, we may never see it or know about it until glory, but that's okay. All right, praise the Lord, amen. I want you to see this, this worship he had. And it was totally, totally, you couldn't ask any better from what it was. Look what he says. I will praise thee with my, what kind of heart? Whole, Whole heart. Not half his heart. Not part of his heart, but his entire being. Now remember, this is a guy, his life is on the line. He's being hunted down by his enemies. He is in a whole lot of trouble. And what does he do? He says, Lord, I'm going to praise you with my whole heart. Yet most people turn from the Lord and leave the Lord. And complain and murmur and gripe and bellyache and whine and fuss and everything. And we've all been there. But we don't want to be, Amen. What we want to do is we want to praise the Lord with our whole heart. It's time to have a worship service when you're in trouble. Why is it when people get in trouble, they seem to see less of church than coming more to church? That's what I don't understand. And here's a man, his life's on the line. And what does he do? He says, I'm totally, I'm going to praise the Lord with my whole heart. Praise speaks of worship. Okay? Notice what else he talks about there in the verse there, he says. Not only he think, he's concerned about his testimony. Hey, guys, you have a testimony tonight. When you're in trouble and you're going through difficult times and so forth, people are watching. People are looking. People are listening. They're going to see how you and I respond and act when we have these difficult times and times of trouble and stress and pressure and circumstances and situations. They're going to just see how much we really do worship and praise the Lord. And so David was concerned about his testimony. After all, he's the king of Israel. After all, he has a reputation known as a man after God's own heart. After all, he's been anointed by Samuel. He's the king of Israel. He's been anointed of God by Samuel the prophet. Amen? So this guy's got a testimony, and you do too. And I do when we're going through times of trouble. 
Look how he was concerned. He says here, he says, I'm going to praise the Lord with my whole heart. Notice, before the gods, I will sing praise unto thee. Now, notice that's little g, gods, and you'll have to look that up in the Hebrew. He's not talking about pagan gods or pagan deities. It's referring to rulers in place of rulership and kings of all the armies that are after him. And the world's watching you and me. And they're going to see how we're going to respond and react. And David says, I'm going to have a testimony before all these rulers and these kings that are after me and these armies. And notice, my enemies. Now, folks, everybody in here has got some enemies. Sometimes, you know, who, uh, who, who knows, you know, what is it? Who needs friends when you got enemies like this or vice versa, or whatever it is? You know, I mean, this guy's got enemies. And yet he's going to live a testimony in front of his enemies. He said, man, I'm going to praise God with my whole heart, and I'm going to sing praises unto the Lord because I've got a testimony, and I want to, I want to give a testimony and be a testimony for the Lord in the time of trouble. See, it's hard for us to give a testimony in the time of trouble if we're whining and crying and fussing and woe is me, and we're drifting away from church rather than becoming more to church. So once I can't figure it out today, when people get in trouble that claim to be saved and Christians, they, 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 they start giving, they, they stop giving, they stop coming to church, and I go, I don't understand this. Well, you ought to be coming more. Listen to what David is saying here. This is gonna be, we're we're going to have fun in this and get into this. All right? And so notice, then too, gladness is expressed. David now is going to express this gladness that's in his heart. Okay? And that is we see David's inspired comprehension of worship. Okay, not only his compulsion to worship. Now, folks, the next time you get in trouble, have a compulsion to worship God. Next time you get in trouble, show up here. Hello, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, Sunday school. Show up at the church to worship. My goodness. Have a compulsion to worship. But then look at his comprehension of the meaning of worship. Now, this is good, boy. Because it's not like what it's like what we had this morning. It's not like a lot what you see in here today. Look at this that 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 causes him this compulsion that drives him in the time of trouble to worship God and to be a testimony for his Lord. Look at this. The first thing. Did you notice what verse two said? Somebody read read it with me. I will worship. Are you with me? Toward thy holy temple. Today we call it the church. Hello? Now, here's what's really interesting. This ought to really get to you. David is going to worship towards the temple. Now, the temple hasn't even been built yet. Solomon would be the one that would build the temple, not David. And not because of David's sin, but because the Lord told David, you're a man of bloody hands. You're a man of war of bloody hands, therefore your son. So during this time right now, David is about to process in all of this because you see, when you defeat armies, you get to spoil. And he's collecting all the materials and supplies for Solomon to build the temple. Well, listen to me, guys and gals that are out there listening. We got 100,000 churches around and you can go to church and worship. You don't have to wait for us to build the church here at West Marion. We got one right here ready for you. And especially our members. Come on, help me out. Especially when you go through a time of trouble. David says, man, I'm going to the church. I'm going to the church to worship my Lord. That's what he's saying here. That's the first uh, meaning of worship, is to come to church and worship the Lord. I will worship the Lord towards thy holy temple. It wasn't even built yet. Secondly, oh, you'll find this. Look in the verse with me also, verse 2. Everybody ready for it? Here we go. I will worship the Lord towards my holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. That speaks of the topic that's being taught in the church. Hello? David was so solidly rich. The church was so solidly rich to him. Is the church rich to you today? See, to some people it is, but to the majority anymore, it's not. Church is not a priority in people's lives anymore. You know that, any of you been around for a while? It, it's different. It's changed. Things aren't normal anymore. And things aren't going to be normal anymore. 
But I told some folks this past week and last week even with talking with them, they were talking about that thing. And I just simply said, what were you doing in 2018? Go back to doing what you were doing in 2018. You don't have to do what all the government and everybody's telling us we got to do and act and behave like this because of COVID. If you want things to get back to the way they were, then go back to the way what you were doing. Amen. 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 The topic was so sweetly refreshing to him. You see, the topic when you come to church ought to be sweetly refreshing to you. And it will be this morning. It was sweetly refreshing to me. And you know what that word loving kindness is translated into Hebrew? Oh, you're going to love this. Grace. Is God's grace sweetly refreshing to you? The grace of God? You see, and and this is beautiful. And he says, I will praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy grace. And notice what else? For thy truth. Because the third truth about worship is we come to the church to worship. We come to worship the topic of grace in the church. You see, and we come to worship truth in the church was so suddenly revealed to him. Isn't that what he said? I will praise thee. Oh, listen to what he says. I will praise thee in verse 2. I will worship towards thy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Now, why do we want to come and praise God for his grace and truth? Because for by grace are you saved through grace. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But more than that, here's why I want to come to church and worship God. Because in John chapter 1 and verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, as the glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And David knew where grace and truth was going to be taught, and it was in the church. That is if you have a church that preaches that. If you don't, go find one. Go find one. David says, man, I'm, gonna, I, I'm in trouble. And I'm going through a lot of difficult times and circumstances and heartache and situations. And I mean, it's just a pressure and it's overwhelming. And it's building up. So what does he do? He says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise the Lord with my whole heart. I'm going to go to the church and I'm going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And why people don't want to do that today, I don't understand. I just don't understand that. And by the way, because verse 3 tells us all about it. Look at verse 3. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. You know what that speaks of? Grace. That's the second G of your 5G sermon tonight. Grace. The first one is gladness. The second is grace. In the day when I, now listen to what Paul said. Paul summed this up for us. Paul said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's what God answered Paul about his, asked for the, rebu- for the removal of the thorn in his flesh. Remember? Paul had trouble. You don't want to read? Read about his testimony in Corinthians. You don't want to talk about a guy that had trouble. And what did he say? My grace. God answered and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul comes back and says, then most gladly, therefore will I rather glory in my trouble. See, in Paul's day, it was infirmities. In David's day, it's troubles. Are you going to you gonna, you gonna glory in your troubles? Notice this, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my David, in my troubles, in you and I today, in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And what did David say in verse 3? He said, In the day when I cried, thou answerest me, and did what? And strengthenest me with strength in my soul. You see, when you're going through some times of trouble, you need to rely on God's grace. You need to understand that grace, His grace is sufficient for your time of trouble. That it's sufficient for your time of uh, infirmities, health, sickness, problems you're going through and facing. God's grace is sufficient. But notice where David wanted to get all of that at, in the church. And yet people don't realize what they're missing, brother. They just don't know, realize what they're missing. 
And, you know, they wonder why they sometimes go through so much and are going through so much and they don't understand it, they don't have the answers, because they're never here. How are you going to grow in grace and knowledge if you're never here? The only way you're going to grow in grace and knowledge is you've got to be under the teaching and the preaching of God's Word. Then you're going to grow in grace and knowledge. And so many believers today are so immature in their Christian faith because they're not growing in their faith because they're not under the preaching and the teaching of sound doctrine. Well, David said, I know what I'm going to do when I get in trouble. I'm going to the house of God. And I'm going to worship to God and praise Him with my whole heart. I'm going to be a testimony to all the enemies around me. And I'm going to experience God's wonderful, marvelous, amazing grace. Nothing like it. Well, the third thing tonight, our third G. Now, some of you only have a 3G phone. That's what I have. Mine's a 3G. I haven't stepped up to the 5G yet, so I have to stop here for the message for me tonight because I've only got a 3G. All right? Here's the third G. Look at verses 4 and 5 with me. Read with me. And the king, now, now read, follow along real carefully and think about these two verses. All right? Think with me. Really think. All the, how many of the kings? All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. O Lord, when they hear thy words of thy mouth, yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Verses 4 and 5 in the 3G talk about glory. How many of you want to talk about glory tonight? How many of you want to experience glory? How many of you know what David's talking about when this is going to happen? This has not happened yet. This is prophecy. You know when this is going to happen? Take a big guess. It lasts for a thousand years. It's called the millennium. During the millennium is when this prophecy is going to be fulfilled. It's not fulfilled yet, you see. So that day has not yet come, but it's on the way. Prophecy concerning the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Isn't it interesting? Back in the Psalms now, we're talking a couple thousand years before Jesus was even born. David writes prophecy that there's coming a day when all the kings of the earth and everybody are going to hear his word of his mouth and they're going to worship him and glorify him and give him glory. That day has not yet come, but it's coming and it's on the way. Now, David said, this is what's going to happen. He said, so when I'm in trouble, I'm going to think about the millennium and, what, and the glory of God that's going to be in the millennium. Oh, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. Well, in verses 6 and 7 now, we're moving right along here. Amen. Not going to be long tonight. We had a long one this morning. And so we're not worried about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. David talks a little bit about government in verses 6 and 7. That's the 4G. So all of you that got a 4G phone, oh, no, wait a minute, that's what I got now. That's right, my 3G phone I had to throw away because nobody supports it anymore. Verizon doesn't support 3G anymore or 2G or 1G. So I got a 4G phone. So I got support. Most of some of you have a 5G. You're big time, man. So that's why you got to stay here and get the whole sermon. Amen? All right, amen. Listen to this. David here sets before us two wonderful truths, two wonderful truths. All right, let's take a look at it. First of all, verse 6. Look, I want you to see this amazing fact, this amazing fact that David puts before us in verse 6. Though the Lord be high, I believe there he was quoting uh, Isaiah 61, I mean, chapter 6 and verse 1. Let me read that to you. Uh, You're going to love this. How many of you remember that one in Isaiah? Okay, you're you're familiar with Isaiah 60, uh, verse 1? All right, let me read to you Isaiah. You might want to turn to if you'd like to. Isaiah chapter 6, I believe it is. Verse number one, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, and above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, his face with twain he covered his feet, and with the twain he did fly, and one cried unto another, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, that's the Lord of God's army, by the way, of heaven, the whole earth is full of his glory, Believe David, and then see, that's what David wrote in verse number four and five that we read. He talked about there's coming a day when the earth will be full of the glory of God. Amen? All right. So here's a great, this is, this is an amazing fact 
that he sees uh, that though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, the meek, the humble. So you want God to have respect for you? Then be humble. Be meek and lowly. Because notice what happened. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but in a world which we live in right now, and all the trouble that's around us, and the trouble that we go through, I don't want God afar off from me. I want Him right there. Amen? You know, we, we had that uh, today. I was walking a, a little bit there where it stopped raining for just a moment. It gave me a chance to walk him down the street. And we went back down to the, to the street there and took, come in, tucked, uh, going to, started going to our little dug cut out there. It was the same road the lady was coming down last night that uh, saw the bear, was there. And, I mean, boy, all of a sudden he stopped dead still. Ears popped up. Eyes went forward, straight ahead, looking at this lot. It's a thick-headed, wooded lot. And, of course, Bear can go in there and hide out for the night and have a good time and be safe. So, man, he's, you can see him. He's, he's sniffing. The ears are up, man. And I'm standing there saying, oh, Lord, please don't let that bear be in this woods. I said, I, I can't run fast. And <laughs> I said, I got pepper spray here, but I don't know how well that will work with that guy. But just let us get out of here quietly and peacefully. And so, come on, Caleb, do your thing, and let's go, boy. And uh, so he did his thing. I mean, he, he wanted to go too. Amen. And uh, so praise the Lord. I mean, you know what I'm saying to you? You see, if that bear popped out of there, I'm in trouble. And you know what? When I get in trouble, I don't want God afar off. You understand what I'm saying to you, church? You see, that's why you need to stay lowly and meek and humble. Don't be strutting like a rooster and a peacock and all that kind of stuff because God resisteth the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And David says here, look what he said, but the proud he knoweth afar off. I don't want God being afar off when I'm in trouble. Are you with me, church? And you're going to find times you may be in trouble. You may find times when you're in some deep trouble. Maybe some times where there's some fear that comes upon you. And I'll tell you what, if that happens, I don't want God being afar off when I cry unto him like David did. I cried unto him, and he answered me and strengthened me. Now I said, now, Lord, if David can kill a bear, a bear so can I. Because I'm going to come against the bear in the name of the Lord. Bear, I adjure you in the name of Jehovah God. Time for you to leave, and I'm going leaving too. So go your way, and I'm going my way. Either that or I'm going to look at that bear and start throwing kisses, man. <laughs> hey, buddy, I love you, man. Well, I love you, buddy. <laughs> Amen. And, see, folks, and folks, you're going to get in trouble, and you're going to cry out. I'll tell you, there will be times when you've cried out. How many of you in a time in your life that you've been on this earth now, there's been a time where you've cried out to God? Amen. Oh, yeah, I've been there. And I'll tell you, when you do, I want God to hear me and answer me. And, and since David kind of gives this thing about, he's talking about praising and calling out to the Lord and all this stuff. And he's telling us if we get too proud, too cocky, the, the, the Lord's going to be afar off. I don't know if God's going to be able to hear us afar off. Hello. I want him right beside me. And so you see, it's a great thing. And this is, again, folks, this is why I'm saying you need to come to church. You need to be here and worship the Lord and to praise the Lord and get filled with the Holy Ghost and, and grow in grace and knowledge of His Word and, and know His Word and, 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 and so forth. And hey, guess what? We're, we face trouble every day with a spirit world uh, that the devil and his demons are out there. And how did Jesus defeat him? With the Word. He quoted the Word of God. And you can't quote it if you don't know it. Oh, amazing fact. The amazing fact does not stagger him. It stimulates him. And David gives evidence of the fact that he's stimulated by this. Look at verse 7. I want you to see his abundant faith. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Now, how many of us can say that tonight? Your trouble may not be like David's. It may not be life-threatening. But, hey, you're walking in the midst of trouble. Thou, now, notice what he says. Thou wilt revive me. That's faith. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. 
He talks about this being revived. What an abundant faith. This is an amazing fact that fired David's abundant faith and gave him a twofold confidence of the government of God. Amen. Ready for him? What was the first thing he said in that verse? Thou wilt revive me. When? When I walk in the midst of trouble. It's an interesting word, revive. God will revive him. The word revive there means to return or to restore to consciousness or life. It also become, it become, uh, became or made active. It means to bring back unto use. It means to renew mentally. David said, man, God's going to renew me. God's going to refresh me. God's going to restore me. God's going to bring me back to my right mind of consciousness. Because you've got to understand, he's got the whole army surrounding him out to take his life. You can imagine how mentally. And he was becoming overwhelmed. And that's what happens when all of this stuff and the trouble comes around us and our mind is being attacked. We get overwhelmed and we're not thinking right. Hello? And when you're in the midst of all of what you're going through, you need some right thinking. You need God to revive you. So no matter that he walks. Now notice he said, I walk in the midst. So he was walking in it. He didn't say, well, if I do or possibly or maybe or might so. No, when I walk in the midst of it, you see, here's the amazing thing. No matter that he walks in the midst of trouble and all power for all knowing and all loving God is with him. And he's not going to be if he's afar off because you and I are full of pride. Hello? Oh, you see, this is beautiful. What's the other wonderful thought, in fact, that he brings this out in this verse? That God will rescue him or God will deliver him. Look at the verse again. All right, he's walking in the midst of trouble. He's going to be revived. Now, here we go. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemies. Here's the rescue. Here's the deliverance. And thy right hand shall save me. Now, David was saved, all right? So he's not talking about being born again here and being saved. He's talking about God delivering him out of trouble. Amen? From his situation. God will deliver. He will rescue me. He will deliver me. What an amazing, this government of God that he's talking about, two wonderful truths, an amazing fact, an abundant faith, and that is that God will revive him and God will restore him, rescue him. Oh, praise the Lord. You need rescuing tonight? Folks, the reason why we got to get the gospel out is because a lot of people need to be rescued. We sing the song around here, not, not real often, but quite a bit, but, but actually, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save and there's a lot of people tonight need to be rescued that are lost without Christ. But hey, there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that need to be rescued tonight. Amen. I'll tell you, a good place to start is right here. Amen. Right here is a good place to start. You see, here, this tonight, this is going to help me. This message helped me. And it'll help you. But see, it's not going to help them because they're not here. See, it's only going to help those that hear it. And then it's only going to help them that apply it. So the first thing you got to do is you got to show up to church, start praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a compulsion to worship. And I'm going to totally, with all my heart, don't worship God with half your heart or part of it, all of your heart, all of your being. I'm going to be a testimony to all those heathen kings out there. You know why? Because I'm God's anointed. I'm God's child. I'm his son. I'm his daughter. I'm saved. I'm a believer. So I'm going to be a testimony to all them out there. That's what David said, amen. Oh, he said, then I'm going to come to the church and worship because the church is solidly rich to him. I hope this church is rich to you. And it only is if you let it be and want it to be, you see. I hope you come here to hear the truth and to God's grace. That's why we're here. That's all you're going to hear. You want to hear the other stuff, go elsewhere. <laughs> One of our dear sisters this morning walked out and she said, Patrick, you keep talking about this guy out there in Texas. She said, who in the world is that? Then I said, J.O. She says, okay, now I know who you're talking to. She says, I won't listen to him no more. Well, I started to think, what, what? be careful what I say. I said, why in the world are you listening to him to start with? Amen. 
And especially don't listen to his wife. She's going to get up there and tell you you can become a god. I mean, folks, that's, that's false doctrine. That, that's heresy. That's, matter of fact, that's called blasphemy. But yet there were 50,000 people there this morning. $72 million income comes in every year. $72 million. Lord have mercy. And then to get on Larry King Live and national television, not just once, but twice. And Larry King point blank asks you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Now, this is from Larry King. And then sit there, mm, 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 oh, 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 Larry, you know, no, I'm not too sure about that. And, you know, there, there's other opportunities, other ways or whatever. And I said, oh, my goodness. Then the following week or whatever week, then Larry King's got Franklin Graham on there. Franklin Graham, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? And Franklin Graham began to preach the gospel to him. I said, go get him, boy. A few weeks later, he had John MacArthur on there. John MacArthur, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? And John MacArthur began to give him an extra Jesus of the scriptures. <laughs> oh, Hallelujah. But this guy, oh, well, Larry, you know, and then Larry asked him a few other questions. No, we don't, we don't mention sin or, or hell or judgment. I mean, those things are all negative, Larry, and we just, we just don't talk about those things. Jesus had more to say about hell and judgment than he did heaven. You know why? He wasn't worried about heaven, but he was worried and concerned about people going to hell. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to come here and get the, uh, sweetly refreshed by the Word of God, His grace. We're going to be told the truth that's going to reveal the Word of God to us through the Holy Spirit. We're going to experience God's wonderful grace. One of these days, we're going to experience the glory of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And then, and then we're going to have this wonderful, amazing fact, of the fact that the Lord uh, is high, He's lifted up, and we find that he, he gives us grace and meekness to the lowly and blesses us. But he was afar off to the proud. Then he says, there's this, this walk about this abundant faith. Even though I'm walking in the midst of trouble, I know this. Look at this. Faith that God will revive me and God will deliver me. Folks, that's faith. Amen. He knew God would and God will. David didn't have any problem in questioning the fact whether he believed God or not. I mean, this is a God after God's own heart, a man after God's own heart. This is God's king and anointed of Israel. He had no problem with that. He didn't question whether God could or not. He said, God will deliver me. God will save me. Oh, praise God. Amen. And then lastly, we're done. Verse 8. Look at verse 8. The Lord will perfect now, remember here a few weeks ago in the lessons here, we were talking about perfection and perfectness, and it means completeness. It needs to be completed. It means completeness. It means maturity. Okay, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. See, God's going to bring you and I about to a place of perfection, and that perfection and completeness and maturity is to be conformed to the image of His dear Son. And God's going to do that. Okay, thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. In other words, David's talking about the 5G growth. See, you come to church to worship and praise the Lord. Amen? With your whole heart. You come to be a testimony to those around you. We come here to, 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 because the church is rich to us. We come because we're going to learn about truth and grace. And, you see, and we come to experience God's grace, amazing grace. We come to see a little bit of the glory of God. Amen. Then we come to know that there's an abundant, a wonderful, amazing fact and an abundant faith that God's going to revive us. See, church, that's why we come to church. We sing the song, Revive Us Again, O Lord. Amen. And that's why we come to church to be revived. And of all things, when you're in trouble, this is the place to come to get revived. And I don't understand why people don't want to. I just really, I, it's mind-boggling and blowing. And then you see, when we're doing all of what we just talked about, you know what's going to happen? You're going to grow. God wants you over and over, we're instructed in the New Testament, to be constantly growing in the, in the nurture and the, and, and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to be growing in the knowledge of Christ. How do we grow? Through the Word. Well, for most people, the average person, this is the only time they hear it. Amen. 
on a whole and on the average, the average person sitting in the church today and all the churches, this is the only time they hear it's when they come. And so when they don't come, guess what? They're not hearing it. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how sad it is. And that's why I know we're in the last days. We're in the last minutes, last hours, and the last, I believe we're in the last minutes of the last hours of the last days. Because the Scripture makes it very clear. We're going to be preaching on that here pretty soon. I'm going to be doing a little mini-series on the last days. Exactly what do they look like? What does the Bible tell us they look like? What's it going to happen like? What's going to be? How do we know we're there? What's going on? And we're going to look right in the Bible, straight out of the Bible, out of the Word of God, and we're going to see. We're going to talk about the days of Noah. We're going to talk about the days of Lot. And then don't tell me after that we're not in the last minutes. And the biggest one of them is, is the abandonment of the faith. Did you know that? That's one of the biggest last day signs there's going to be an abandonment of the faith. Paul told young Timothy that, that in the latter days the time will come. Well, I always keep telling Paul when we quote that, Paul, guess what? The time has come. It's here already. That they're not going to bear up under sound doctrine. They don't want to hear sound truth in preaching. But they're going to go find teachers. Now, this is talking about people in the church. This is what's going to happen. They're the apostate. We call it the apostasy. That's the, that's the falling away. Now, not falling out of grace and falling out of your salvation. We're talking about falling away from your faith, falling away from the church and the faith. It's the abandonment of the faith. The apostate church. We're in those days. And they're going to be this massive falling away. And they're going to go after teachers like out in Texas having itching ears and tingling signals. And here it is. And the Bible says they're going to turn their ears away from the truth. Are you with me? That's what the Scripture says. Remember, he wrote the script. I just quoted. it. All right? Praise God. So we find that. So God wants you and I to be growing. And folks, and especially when you're in trouble. Especially when you're going through difficult times. Listen to what this says. Here it is. Here is, I wrote this down. Here is the ultimate secret of God's seeming uh, days in delivering us from the apparent triumph of the enemy trouble, I put. The fact that he is working on us. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. I am a promise. Changing the song now. I am a possibility. I am a, you know, and we go on and on and sing these little songs. How truth that is. He uses adverse circumstances to perfect us, to bring us into maturity and completeness, to accomplish some wise and wonderful purpose he has in mind for us. And notice I put, amen. So, trusting God when things go wrong. How do we do it? Do what King David did. And I guarantee you, things will go a lot better and smoother, and you will enjoy it, and it'll be a wonderful journey. Now remember, (laughs) I don't think we've been through what David's been through. We definitely haven't been through what Paul's been through. But oh my God, it's it's amazing when we come to church so often, and we ought to and we should, but yet our hearts are so broken and so saddened but old friends, don't let it be. Don't let it get to you. You see, you hang in there. You be faithful unto the end. And God will be faithful to you. Trust me. Be faithful to the end. Hang into there. The end's coming. I was thinking about it at the lunch table today. And I said, I believe we're there. It's just a matter of time now. As the Lord puts it all together, and I believe that we will see the end in our lifetime as we know it. Because Jesus said, the end will come when this gospel is preached throughout the world. He didn't say that it was heard. He didn't say it was received. Because we already know that. There's a lot of people that don't hear it. There's a lot of people that don't want to hear it. Even believers really don't want to hear it anymore. They've turned their ears to it. 
And a lot of people reject his love, as we talked about this morning. You know that. And God knows that. That's why Jesus said, my heart is, I, I would desire that all men get saved. But he knew that wasn't going to happen. That all men would come to repentance, but they're not. They're going to perish. So we know that. So I can proud, honestly announce to you tonight, church, that the gospel is being preached tonight, literally, around the world. We have every means and opportunity today to preach the gospel. Now, we were in Ghana, West Africa. We had laptop computers there. We had cell phones that only had G3. That's all there was. But do you realize that we could get out some places where we were at and we could pull stuff up on a laptop computer or a phone and hear preaching? It's there. We're there. The gospel is being preached around the world by television, radio, internet, YouTube, Bog, Twitter, you name it, Facebook, uh, Rumble. It, it's there. I was reading uh, uh, one church just last night or yesterday, Saturday, that right now they were saying that their, their television network station is in 205 countries. Last report we got several years ago on our website, our worldwide website, we were in over 192 countries. Somebody was sharing with me today that she had, was on her phone uh, watching this program and took and, and, and shared it with a friend out in, I think, Nevada, Las Vegas, or California, and they were watching us this morning's message through cell phones. Now Jesus said, hey, all these other things, they're going to happen. But he said, don't worry. Be not troubled. Don't be stirred or agitated. These things are going to happen. But the end is not yet. But, there's another but, this gospel shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. And I believe we are there right now. Jesus is awaiting the Father's command to go get your bride. And the groom is going to step out of glory one more time and make his way down here below the clouds. He's going to shout the trumpet's going to sound. The shout's going to shout. And we, the bride of Christ, are going to take off to meet the groom in the air. And where is he taking us? Back to the Father's house to present us, his bride, to the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But in the meantime, tomorrow may be a troubled day. What are you going to do? You know what I'm going to do if I have some trouble tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday morning? It's Wednesday night, I'm going to be here praising the Lord Amen. with my whole heart. Just what King David did. Now, if it's good enough for David, it's good enough for us. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We praise you. We bless you. We give you glory and praise and honor. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you for penning this in the Holy Spirit and using uh, King David as the writer to give it to us, uh, uh, giving us an experience that he experienced in his own life. When all the enemies were about him to take his life, he says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise the Lord with my whole heart. I'm going to give testimony to all of my enemies, and I'm going to worship the Lord in his temple. Oh, my. And I'm going to re learn about his grace and his mercy and his truth. Be lifted up. Learn about his glory that's coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. May we use this little message tonight to encourage our hearts in the days ahead, and especially our brothers and sisters that are struggling. Let us help them with it as well. Be a blessing to them. Now, Father, bless those that have been watching on Facebook and especially those that have been watching us live and rumble. 
God bless you, Lord. Thank you for it. Pray for those that will be watching it just a little bit from now as it's uh, reloaded and lifted up. And may it be a blessing to them. And, Lord, if there's someone that doesn't know Jesus, Father, may they cry out for your help, for your mercy, for your grace. And we know you'll be more than willing to give it to them. And, Father, we thank you and we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hebrews 12, 2 says what? Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's who we got to look to when you're at the bottom, folks. Don't look to the world. Don't look to the psychiatrist. Don't look to the neighbors. I mean, when you're in the bottom, you better look up. And that's what's good. When God puts us in the bottom, church, we got nowhere else to look but to look up. Even in the belly of the whale, we can still look up. Because David said, if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. David said, if I ascend into hell, thou art there. You see, no matter where we go, he's there. God was in the whale with Jonah. Why not? He made him. so good the back didn't do so good you know the eyes weren't open yet and couldn't see so well and I'm going oh Lord I said man I don't think I'm going to make this you know if you don't give me some strength some physical strength I'm not going to make this this journey this body is is wore out I mean come on and I said no and he said wait a minute what are you preaching on today boy I said I'm preaching I'm anticipating a change when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory and today Lord you might come today and I get that change hallelujah I get a glorified body no more pain no more glasses no more eardrums no more this no more false teeth if, or no teeth whatever you got I'm going to become the toothless pastor before this thing is all over with if God doesn't make them last a little bit longer no more back surgeries no more knee surgeries no more kidney surgeries no more no more no more pain no more suffering no more dying I'm going to be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye and I'm anticipating it because the king of glory is coming hallelujah